Hey all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Andrew Rowe and I am a cloud engineer. So in this video, I really want to uh, touch base on a video I made a little while back where I was explaining you know, my day-to-day -day responsibilities as a cloud security engineer and I really wanted to let you guys know of a little career path that you could take if you want to become a cloud engineer as well. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer than normal, but I promise that if you stick around to the end, you guys are going to learn a lot of really, really important knowledge that's going to help you in your career, you know, going forward or in your job hunt right now. So without further ado, this video is going to be about skills that you can acquire in order to become a cloud security engineer. So as a cloud security engineer, your responsibilities are going to vary pretty greatly depending on what company you go to, what kind of organization it is, what kind of industry they're in and you know the seniority of your actual position now there are three main skills that i really recommend that you guys you know nurse and and acquire if you want to become successful in this field or you just want to get a job as an entry-level engineer three main skills i'm talking about are cloud fundamentals knowledge of security basics and knowledge of at least one programming language preferably i would say two just because you know it always helps if you know more but for right now, if you're looking at entry level, knowledge of one security, I mean, one programming language, you're gonna be more than enough. Now, how refined your skills actually are in those three specific categories are really going to be, you know, dependent on your seniority level, like I said before. But for the sake of this video, and I, I really think it'll help you guys a lot if I base this entire video on more of entry level positions, although I will sprinkle in some tidbits on, you know, more higher level seniority positions as we go. Um, you know, as I see fit. So many people in my field don't just come right to cloud security engineering, whether it's at a college, at a high school, if you do a non-traditional path, they come from entry level fields of other industries, whether it's cybersecurity analysts, uh, entry level software engineers like myself, they really come with a leg up on the competition in one of these areas. For example, cybersecurity analysts gonna come with a leg up, hopefully on the competition in terms of security basics, whereas an entry level software engineer is going to hopefully have knowledge of at least one programming language that's going to check the box for one of the three that I specified in the beginning. But if you're looking to hop directly into cloud security engineering at a college, at a high school, although I recommend you come out of college, um, even though I took the non-traditional career path, I really recommend you get a degree, if you can, of course. I recommend that you start off right away with trying to figure out one programming language, whether it's Python or Node.js, I really recommend one or the other. Uh, could be JavaScript as well. But these are two languages that are extremely popular right now in cloud engineering, cloud security engineering, as they have a lot of utility in terms of serverless applications and, you know, CLIs and SDKs in general in the cloud. Now, the reason you want to be really comfortable with one of those programming languages before you become a cloud security engineer is that you're going to be tasked, and I'm tasked as well, with creating secure infrastructure to, you know, automate workflows using serverless applications such as Lambda with AWS or serverless with Azure. And you're going to be tasked with posture enhancement of your cloud environment. Now that can be pretty vague, but essentially what that means is your posture for your security posture is going to be at a certain level. And if you're a cloud security engineer, your job is going to be to come in and enhance that security posture. Now that could be done with various solutions, you know, compliance solutions, monitoring and logging, things like this, but it's all wrapped up in programming or scripting. So you're definitely gonna wanna learn at least Python or Node.js. It's really up to you. I recommend Python because there is a bit more utility in the cloud with it. And I think it's a bit more of a dynamic language in terms of scripting and automating, but Node.js is just as viable as well. Now learning Python or Node.js is really gonna help you to become a successful cloud engineer but it's also going to help you pass an algorithms interview. A lot of these companies will require you to show some level, level of proficiency in programming to actually get the job. And cloud security engineering is a technical job. It's not really you know, a lot of analysis work. Again, it really depends on the company you're going for, but for the sake of this video, I'm really gonna be talking about those technical cloud security engineers. So Python or Node.js, again, really recommend Python for this. But it's going to help you pass the algorithms interview that's going to leave a really, really good mark on your recruiter or your technical recruiter that's going to help you get a leg in in the you know, actual job that you're trying to acquire. Now, secondary to that programming technical skill, you're going to be required to be able to frame solutions in your mind. Now, that might seem a little weird, but what I mean by that is you're going to have to have fundamental AWS cloud engineering 
um, just cloud fundamentals and cloud fundamentals knowledge in general, because you're going to have to take vague requirements that come down from managers and be able to frame a solution in your mind. You know, any task that I usually get at my job today is usually a high level list of requirements saying, you know, Andrew, this solution needs to have X, Y, and Z. And then it's my job to kind of create a frame of reference in my head for what that solution will actually look like based on things that I've created in the past. Now that's really helpful if you actually understand cloud fundamentals, AWS fundamentals, any sort of cloud provider fundamentals, because you're going to be able to reference things that you've done in the past to create a solution that you can now use in the future. It also helps you to understand, you know, basic cost analysis of solutions, because oftentimes you'll find a solution that may be best to solve the problem, but it's not necessarily going to fit the business needs of that actual company or the client you're working with because it's very, very costly. So if you have an understanding of cloud fundamentals with things such as IAC or infrastructure as code, serverless applications, you're gonna have a huge leg up on the competition as you're already gonna have that frame of reference of how to create specific solutions in your mind. And that's only going to help you when you go to create more in the future. You have a really solid foundation to build on. Now, I really wanna make this video cloud agnostic because I know that you guys understand that I have a preference toward AWS. And I, you know, I kind of think that I have a reason for that. AWS currently has a 32% market share on all cloud providers, whereas Azure's a, uh, you know, kind of not so close second at 17. And then we have, you know, Google Cloud at 6%. So it really would be more bang for your buck to stick with AWS if you are trying to get a job just based solely on statistics. But I also can't discount Azure as a viable option to actually getting, you know, a job in this field. Now, in terms of some free courses that I recommend and all the courses I'm gonna recommend in this video are absolutely free on YouTube. I really would recommend Simply Learn. First of all, Simply Learn is really, really good for basics. It's gonna show you at a high level what the cloud actually is. It's excellent for engineers that are just coming in at an entry level. Say you've never had any sort of cloud experience, whether that's you're coming from on-prem, um, you're coming from a software engineering background. This is gonna show you the basics of the cloud, not only at a price analysis model, but also just basic resources in general. And I really think it's a great starting point for you to start your career in the cloud. The next resource I'd recommend is actually from Free Code Camp, and it's going to be a, you know, AWS basics for a beginner's guide. And I'll leave a link down in the description for all these videos, but this is gonna be more in depth and it's actually a pretty lengthy video, but I really recommend that you skip down on the scrub bar to see exactly where you wanna get better in or what you're unsure of. But a ton of basic solutions are gone over in this video, as well as basic resources, what they are, how they're used, and you know how you can better speak about them in your interviews to actually pass your, um, you know, your verbal interviews. And lastly, another video I recommend is the AWS Cloud Practitioner Guide from Free Code Camp again. And the reason I recommend this, although a lot of people don't recommend getting the Cloud Practitioner, I think it's a great confidence boost. I've taken it myself and passed it in under three days. I'll leave a link up here if you're willing to, or if you wanna check that video out. But I really think it's a great confidence boost if you're just getting into the cloud and you really want to understand fundamentals as well as get a certification that's you know tangible that you can use when you're looking for employment. Again, I know people don't recommend it. They recommend you go straight to the Associate uh, Solutions Architect uh, certification, but there are different, you know, a lot of different ways that you can go in your career path. And I think this is a great starting point if you have little to no knowledge of the cloud in general, and you just want to get a certification that shows your employers that you're really, really interested in this field. All right. So now we come to the security part of the skills list. Now this part's going to be a bit hard to recommend training for as it's, you know, has a lot to do with more general knowledge of security in the cloud that you kind of get over practicing, um, on your own, uh, but I can give you some advice from my personal career. So I gained a lot of hands-on knowledge at my first job where I was not only a software engineer, but a security engineer, cloud engineer. It's a really small company and I had to do a lot of different things and wore many different hats. So you're gonna get a lot of hands-on knowledge using trial and error. Now I know that's really, really frustrating to hear and I promise I'll give you resources after this, but when you first start out in the cloud, it's going to be a hassle just understanding all the resources that you're looking at. When you go to that homepage where all the services are listed, I think there's over 200 services of which I've used about 30 and I use the AWS console or the cloud console every single day. So don't get overwhelmed when you first look at the console. But, you know, when you first start off as a cloud security engineer, 
you're going to have to have a base level amount of fundamental knowledge that you should be bringing from a career before this or be bringing from your own kind of self-study before this as well. So when thinking of security in the cloud, I would really like to go back to first principles uh, in theory. So when you're looking at a server, you know, who's supposed to have access to the server? Who's supposed to not have access to the server? Um, should it be open to the internet? Things like that are what you really wanna frame your point of reference around when thinking about securing the cloud in general. It's very, very parsed out, meaning all of your user permissions are gonna be extremely parsed out. For example, if I have permissions to a specific server, I might not have uh, permissions to a specific directory, or if I have um, permissions to you know, a specific part of a serverless Lambda, I might not have permissions to the rest of that serverless Lambda or the database that it's connected to. Now that can be really, really frustrating if you're an engineer and you really just wanna get something to work as I am user permissions and roles are one of the biggest pain points for engineers. But if you're looking at the security aspect of the cloud, it's really, really useful because you can parse out your infrastructure and your permissions, whether it's between users, groups, roles, and you always have an idea of what's going on in your environment. Some basic solutions that you're gonna to wanna to look into when you are trying to decide you know, how you present yourself in an interview and what kind of things you can talk about having experience in, you're gonna to wanna to be able to talk about CloudTrail, CloudWatch groups, and subscription filters. Now, what those are, our CloudTrail is the logging service, CloudWatch is the logging group service, and subscription filters are things that you can create to you know, kind of send data to lambdas and serverless functions that you want to. So for example, if we're talking about this solution in theory, what would happen is CloudTrail is going to log all of my logs from every single region in AWS. CloudWatch is gonna be the group that kind of aggregates them and puts them all in one central place in an S3 bucket, which is just a document storage space. Uh, container, excuse me. And then subscription filters are what can, are what is going to be kind of triggered when a certain action happens in that cloud. So, or in that trail. So for example, if you're trying to look out for everyone that tries to delete a permission or delete a policy off of a user, because a lot of times if something's compromised, what a user will try to do or what a malicious actor will try to do is they'll try to delete all the other policies off of the users. So the users can't actually log in to try to circumvent what the malicious user is doing. So what you wanna do is you wanna use a subscription filter to filter all of your logs to look for you know detached user policy. Now this is super big, but I really just wanna give you guys a frame of reference and I can go you know, in much more depth and show you an actual technical analysis guide for this kind of solution if you're interested. Definitely leave a comment in the description uh, down below if you'd like something like that. But I really just wanna give you guys a frame of reference to help start your learning curve into AWS, specifically in security. Now another thing that's really, really useful for AWS in terms of security is how segmented you can create your networks. Now what I mean by that is you can segment your gateways, meaning what talks to the internet. You can segment your VPCs. You can separate VPCs into multiple VPCs. You can have subnets that are inside your VPCs. Now this might all seem extremely overwhelming, but the sentiment I really want you to take away is that you should understand network segmentation before you become a cloud security engineer because it's going to be one of your biggest principles that you can use as your backbone as a security team. Now, if cloud is completely new to you and specifically cloud security engineering or security in general, I have some you know, resources that I can recommend to you. First off, I'm gonna recommend the AWS security tutorial based on Simply Learn. Again, that's a theme here, but I really think Simply Learn has a great YouTube channel and they explain things in depth at a high level, if that makes sense. So it's really good for entry level positions because it's gonna to explain to you all the things that you might need to talk about in an interview. And it's gonna give you talking points for, you know, things that you can go and research yourself when an interviewer asks you, you know, do you have any experience with this? You can say, no, but I understand how it works and, and here's how. That's always a great starting point when you're in an interview. Just keep the, you know, conversation going and, and always be able to talk about something even if you don't fully understand it yet. Not saying lie to people and say you understand it, but you can always be like, hey, you know, here's some parts of it I understand. I'd be happy to research more of it for you. Now, next one is gonna be the reinforced talk. I think it's from 2018. This is gonna be a bit of a longer video, but I think it's really important because it shows a lot of the new age technology in 2018, which is kind of fundamental technology now. And if you understand all of the assets and resources that they're using in the reinforced talk, I think you're gonna have a really good time at not only passing an interview, but also being a successful cloud engineer or cloud security engineer in general. While I do recommend these certain kinds of resources, I also recommend if you're completely new to get your Security Plus. Now, before you guys freak out and yell at me saying Security Plus is on-prem, I, I understand that. 
but it's going to give you knowledge of basic security principles that still, you know, have to do with cloud. They're just kind of more on the back end. Now in cloud or AWS specifically, you're going to have, you know, what's called the shared responsibility model. I'll definitely leave a link for it in the description below, but here's kind of a vague, um, you know, little graphic that they usually put out. So what it does is it, it creates a separation of duties between what is AWS's responsibility or what is the cloud's responsibility. And this isn't AWS, you know, centric. Every single cloud provider has one of these, but you know, some resources and some responsibilities are gonna be on the cloud provider. Whereas if you were on-prem, they'd be on you as the data center or whatever. But as a cloud provider, you only have the responsibility of certain things. And it's really helpful to understand them, not only in doing security assessments for clients, but also, you know, kind of just having that frame of reference in your own mind. That's definitely gonna be a theme here. Just having a reference point for you to think back on is always helpful in the cloud because almost everything is connected. So if you can think about one resource or one way you did something, there's always a chance that that resource or that way you did it can also help you, you know, elaborate or optimize on a, a future resource or a future solution. Again, the Security Plus is an on-premise uh, certification. At least it was when I took it. And I'll leave the link for the book that I took it with in the description below. But you know, putting all the on-prem aside, you're getting a security certification and it's really going to be paramount that you understand the security fundamentals that are happening in this book. So you can not only become a successful cloud engineer or cloud security engineer, but you can actually, you know, talk about these things in your interview and, you know, really impress your future employers. Now, if certifications uh, for the cloud are more your thing, there is a security specialty that I'll leave a link for in the description below. This is a specialty cert though. So it's not an entry level cert by any means. You definitely need to have some sort of IT knowledge. It's not the hardest certification to pass in the world, but it definitely requires some previous knowledge in terms of basic security fundamentals and you know basic IT fundam fundamentals in general. Now, if you're looking to get a cloud certificate in general, you can always go to the certification page on AWS where they show you different learning paths you can take based on what skills you wanna acquire and how you wanna take your career. I'll leave this link in the description below. And although it doesn't strictly pertain to security, these certifications and the prep you have to undertake for the exam will help you immensely. All right, so I know that was a lot to take in. And if you guys are still unclear about anything I said and you have further questions, really don't feel, you know, don't hesitate at all to reach out to me on Discord, on Twitter, or just leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can get you an answer. I really believe that the path that I described is the one of least resistance to get a job as a cloud security engineer. Obviously there are other factors that I can't control and you can't control being one of them. Uh, do you have a degree? Does your employer want you to have a degree? What industry is your deployer in? It usually seems like oil and gas and energy companies and companies that may be um, you know, outdated, so to speak. I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean of, you know, of an industry in, you know, the past. Um, they seem like they really have a high bar for cloud security engineers, but there are a lot of startups that you can, you know, try to invest your time in and try to get an interview with that will really take you under their wing and try to build you up as a technical cloud security engineer. It's definitely worth their time and it's 100% worth yours. Now, what you can control to become a cloud security engineer is you definitely need to put in a lot of work. This job has a lot of different aspects of it being one, you know, fundamental security knowledge, you need to know a programming language, and you need to know the cloud in general. So it's basically taking three different job descriptions in some companies and adding them all into one, but it's really rewarding to, you know, see the products that you can create and see the different ways that you can fit into a team, whether it's, you know, the DevSecOps engineer, which is another version of a cloud security engineer, just a little more technical, a little more on the DevOps team, but it's really, really rewarding as a career path. So with that in mind, I hope this video helped you all. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in Discord or Twitter or in the comments. I'll try to answer all that I can. And I really hope you guys have a great rest of your day.